Okay, so in the last video, we showed manual recording with the record button. Here we have the circadian rhythm master clock coming out into the QCD black channel here. We have a divide by 32, and we're going to take that signal out and show you how to record into the record in CV jack. So we're sharing the same clock with the circadian rhythm off screen, so everything is beat synced with the content and the recording time. So we'll arm like we did in the previous recording. We'll hear our stereo signal now. And then when we're ready, we can go ahead and plug this in because we won't be manually arming. The second this gate goes high, we'll be recording. So say we want the sample one without the main drum loop. Let's just let it come around a few times with the, with the trigger. We know we have it. Trigger's low, let's go up to two. Let's cue the drum. So now we're recording the same, same measure, length, but into sample two with a different variation. So maybe we do the same thing. Break here. We're in three now. Going high. We know our recording sits solid and busy is lit. Now let's go up to four. Maybe kill everything except for those two first voices. Now we're recording that into four. We could go faster, so why don't we speed that up a little bit, go up into five, and create some different weird textural mixes for some variation. And go even faster for our record. So we know we're on here. One. One. We're on. It's a much shorter phrase. Maybe add some more variation. and so on. So we just recorded with a trigger from the QCD um, a few different samples here into the orange bank. So we're going to do the same trick to load it into uh, a channel. So shortcut was hold bank, record bank, and then hold play bank at the same time for one second. You see that that red turned into an orange. We could do that on both sides. And now we can play back with the trigger or manually those samples we just recorded. Now we could stereo link the two. So unlinked, and then back to link. So our trigger is going to be playing from both outputs now. So we have a trigger triggering the playback. Play back the other phrases we did. And it's all in time because we're recorded in the same timing and we're playing back in the same timing. We've triggered all the drums in the same timing. We go even faster. Now our length is all the way on both, as you can see there. I can't turn those pots anymore. Easy to make breaks. Another sample. So we've already broken our track down into parts and we can reassemble them on the fly. Here's a total breakdown, maybe a bridge. And like the other sample playbacks, um, you know, we could do the same same type of tweaks, find a different starting point, different length. Now we have sounds there because our clock is shorter, so if we speed that up, we're going to have a new beat sync loop, essentially. So now we've got this kick. Change the length, find a different starting point. Now we have a bass starting in there. Shorten that, maybe. Now you can find nice up and down in between points, upbeats and syncopated stuff because this star position is gradual. So we can find in between notes, but we're still going to be triggering in that time sync trigger. So now we have that kick going forward. That's just because we've moved that star position up again. 
same thing. Do reverse. We could do uh, pitch tracking or pitch shifting, which we didn't show actually in the manual playback, so we could show that now. Playback another loop. Pitch it down. Now we have the loop coming back around in time, but we've pitch shift a little bit. So you can hear that that timing from the QCD is still creating a seamless loop even though we've pitch shifted. You can hear a little bit of stereo play here. And we do a reverse, find a different length. Trigger it faster. So, I mean, we can approach it pretty straightforward. Just play back those phrases, you know, in the one, two, three, four bar lengths like we recorded, or we can pick shorter pieces of it like this, you know, pitch shift, reverse. Uh, we have a lot of options. So hopefully that gives you a few more ideas of how to use and incorporate the record section into your STS workflow. So we've shown off that you can not only playback, monitor out of the playback channels here, but we can also access and use the record ends at the same time. So we're not we're not limited to either or. So if you can get it into your either your studio setup, your live setup, um, it can offer you a lot of flexibility, not only in documentation, but in, in the creation of music, as we've shown here with the phrase sampling. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Happy patching.